chart update 7th of June and still it lingers at a time when we should have been able to celebrate brushing off the virus and recalling the follies of the ex-Johnson government the people continue to linger in terror land. Note to censors we use only government data if you have a problem with the results speak to the government. I see thanks to a viewer sending it to me that Ferguson has published a paper estimating how many lives lockdown has saved. I shall be submitting a counter paper showing that not one case was avoided, not one life saved. I look forward to debunking this product of their hubris. Other than that, a raw and standard update this week, deep into dismantling the legitimacy of the core epidemiology models. I never imagined I would have to do such. All I wanted was to take a peek and see if their model was a, with a wider trailing edge was a good fit. And then I started to see the flaws and the nonsense. Exponential built into the model. No escape. Dial in a population. That's how many people get the virus. Unreal. A model that isn't accurate but massively exaggerates versus normal figures. Isn't worth the bites it takes in cyberspace. A parrot. It doesn't discover or reveal anything it merely returns back to you the assumptions you put into it. Any one of the flaws should have disqualified the model, and yet nobody notices and the models are supported and embodied in code and analysed as though they're real and the holy grail, instead of deeply flawed fantasy machines. It is the most depressing and disheartening experience to find that the science of epidemiology is no more than snake oil and the models, extant long before COVID-19, are tailor-made to support falsely exaggerated threats to scare people in their homes. When Gates said, grow exponentially, and if we'd kept on going to work travelling like we were, that curve would never bend until you had the majority of the people infected, he was merely stating what the core epidemiological model shows. It is false, but did he lie, or did he merely quote a lying model? He may indeed have an agenda. He may indeed be behind a great deal of the nonsense. But so is the scam and charade of epidemiology, the science that relies on and believes in these models. Put in the population, that's how many people get infected. No, but it's in the model, and so it's true. We are deep into a post-democracy world. The people continue to sleepwalk through a land of terror from COVID-19, terror from rioting, and the white-collar middle class, who are the ones who should have rebelled, instead tut-tut at the sad events. So much falsehood, and so few, our viewers, who get to see the entirety of it. Well-meaning people trying to explain the UK figures, or US figures, or Sweden, without understanding the charade. It is like Dark City and The Case. There is no case. So here we go. Italy, as always, leads off down to 10% of peak, but also taking its time to die. Still, 20% of overall mortality, and you'd think people would be celebrating. Are they? Rest of the world, starting with Africa, and for a true world tour, check out the video of the same name. No narration, but a valuable insight nevertheless. Algeria lingering, but at less than one death's day, COVID-19 deaths expressed as a fraction of a day's normal deaths, not even close to being a crisis. South Africa, likewise a fraction of a day's deaths, but after that early success, it's just in a remorseless climb. We'll just have to watch and see when it deigns to curl over. A while since we needed that key concept. Zambia, 0, 0.0 days deaths, which means less than 0 0.049 of a day's deaths. Not really an issue for them then. Lucky them. The Americas and Barbado, oops, excuse me, Barbados leaves off with a non-event, one death day, and it's over. Brazil and a country that's almost worrying in that it's a multiple of Hubei at 2.9 times deaths, 6.2 death days, though overall it's a tiny fraction of normal mortality, 7.8%. Canada at 8.1 death days and 3.8 Hubei, a normal agenda country comparable to a core EU country 
and with a strangely lingering death's resurgence. Real? Still a tiny fraction of normal mortality. You'd wonder why this was an issue. Ecuador, like Brazil, a non-aligned country, yet with 8.1 death days, a tiny fraction of normal mortality. A real issue, but not a significant one. Mexico, somewhat likewise, and still steadily climbing to European levels at 1.7 Hubei, but again a tiny fraction of overall normal mortality. An issue, but by no means a serious or critical one. And the USA, too busy rioting to notice that the virus went sideways at peak. Memo to self, investigate where the viruses track their progress and understand the concept of peak. No? Oh well, agenda then. Austria and what passes for sanity in Europe. Three days, still 15 times worse in the Far East, but three days mortality and overall 3.2%? That isn't an issue. It's a footnote on page 3 or page 7. Whereas Belgium, remind me, what's in Belgium? Oh yes, EU HQ. And gosh, is that 33 death days, 16 times Hubei, Despedé reaching over 100% normal mortality, nearly 40% overall. Wow, a virus hotspot or an agenda hotspot. You decide. Croatia, meanwhile, free of the EU, has a day's deaths, barely visible overall and daily mortality at 1.3%. How lucky to be non-aligned with the US, EU, UK. Denmark, four death days, twice Hubei, standard EU agenda compliant nation, but loyal enough to its own citizens to have the thing fizzle out. Overall mortality, 4.5%, like a minor sideline. Hopefully they're taking that view politically as well. Finland, 2.4 days, 1.1 Hubei, over and over, minuscule mortality, a good non-aligned European result. France, a hardcore EU member, so hardly surprising to find it with 17.5 death days, 8.3 times Hubei, and daily mortality touching 100% though still with overall mortality and not even 15%. Great drama signifying nothing. How very French. Germany, a hardcore EU member, but it did its duty no more at 4.2 death days 2 times Hubei and overall mortality of 4.3%, with deaths barely impinging on daily mortality, and its well-separated curves make it a model of a proper record of a contagion. Done. Bye-bye. Greece, no love for Brussels, and it shows with near Far Eastern numbers at 0.7 death days, barely three times the Far East, and less than a third of Hubei. Daily and overall mortality flatlined to the point of near invisibility at 0.7% overall. Bravo, Greece. Hungary, not a core EU member, 2.2 death days, 1.1 times Hubei, Good by European standards, overall mortality barely noticeable at 2.5%, a small item in the least read section of the newspaper. Iceland scared us but it was just testing. 1.1 death days, 0.5 Hubei, 1.3% overall mortality. A non-issue well handled. Ireland, finished curves, which is great, 13.6 death days, 6.4 Hubei, not nearly so great. A loyal EU subject. Faradkar, sounds very Irish, just saying. Even so, still only 14.4% of normal mortality. Malta, 0.7 death days, near Far East at 0.3 Hubei, 1.1% overall mortality. Another non-issue well handled. Netherlands, right next to where? Brussels EU HQ. So, 14 death days, 6.6 .6 times Hubei, and some significant 50% daily mortality, but still overall 14%. Like, we tried, but just couldn't make it serious enough. Sadly, it was enough to fool the public. Norway, one of the earliest participants, always a good performer, and 1.8 death days, not even Hubei. 
overall mortality minuscule at 1.9% and barely noticeable mortality on a daily basis. Not such a core EU member then. Poland 1.2 death days, 0.6 Hubei, overall mortality 1.3%, barely registers. How asleep do you have to be not to recognise that as long as you're not close to a power centre, US, New York, UK, Brussels, then you have a much better COVID-19 experience. Portugal, a pretty standard loyal EU level at 5.8 days, 2.9 Hubei. Look at the implied death rates, a bit high, what? Still, overall mortality, 6.6%. How on earth did they sell this as a crisis? And now what? Sneaky sideways move in cases and deaths. Is it real? Russia, probably curling over at last, long time since we needed that phrase, at around Hubei levels. Spain has implemented the agenda with enthusiasm from all reports. High daily mortality, but it's got completed curves, pretty much. 322% lagged death rate. Maybe should have read the memo on letting cases build before stuffing deaths. Sweden, and I'm sorry, but anyone trying to pretend this is normal, with the cases and deaths just going sideways, on and on, and 17 death days, 8.4 times Hubei, just racking them up until the world shakes their head and says poor Sweden should have locked down. Switzerland, by contrast, a no-lockdown country and rather scathing about lockdown, have two very nice completed curves, 7.7 .7 days and 3.7 Hubei, so apparently a loyal EU member, but still only 7.7% overall mortality. Difficult to say, it's an existential crisis. Turkey, not a core EU member, so no surprise at 2.2 death days, 1 times Hubei, and minuscule overall mortality at 2.5%. Like I say, if you can't see the connection to being a core EU member, sad. Media blind or obeying orders. And the UK, again, 24 tie days, 11 times Hubei, and the virus spotted it was at peak and went sideways. High daily mortality, and yet with all the stuffing, still hasn't managed more than 24% overall mortality. And again, nobody notices. Welcome to post-democracy Britain. What a pleasure to get to the Far East, far from the agenda. Reminds me of On the Beach, except it seems politicians have enjoyed exerting their power in Oz and New Zealand. Still, 0.2 death days, 0.1 Hubei, 0.2% of overall mortality. Fair dinkum. China is really Hubei, 84% of cases, 96% of deaths, but it's a reminder that anyone who talks of China rather than Hubei hasn't bothered to do their homework. Indonesia, climbing but curling over. Somewhat nostalgic saying that, not a material threat at 0.3 death days. Japan, finally sorted and headed back down, nearly done in cases and deaths, with 0.3 death days, 0.1 Hubei. How strange that the West finds it so hard to emulate the Far Eastern experience. Different agenda? Korea, flatlined a long time ago before this even got started, over here. Strangely, no lesson learned from this no-lockdown nation that respected its people too much to implement such a strategy. Its words. Malaysia, done and dusted a long time ago. 0.1 death days. 0.1 times Hubei, which must be 0.05 rounded up. Flatlined on overall mortality, all these Far Eastern nations, it's like they're experiencing a completely different virus. New Zealand, 0.2 death days, 0.1 Hubei, overall mortality 0.2%, and yet still their politicians playing silly buggers. Better though than our version. Philippines, a rare rising Far Eastern nation, but at five or six deaths a day, not exactly a crisis, is it? And that's normalised versus 2464 deaths from other causes every day. Singapore, a city-state, a bit of a contrast with the city and state of New York. 0.2 death days, 0.1 Hubei. 
Last time I checked a while back, New York City was on 100 days, 500 times worse than a similarly crowded city. Same virus? Sure. Thailand, done so long ago, its daily deaths no longer show. Both curves completely over. A bit of a contrast with its cousin Sweden. 0, 0.0 death days, which means less than 0, 0.045. Flatlined on overall mortality. Vietnam, always a pleasure to leave the Far East with a country that had a death, then cancelled it. Last region, loosely the Middle East Central Asia. India still climbing, gently curling over. Fond memories of more innocent time, not a threat at 0 0.2 death days. Iran looked good but found a new outbreak, one of the rare second outbreaks, though actually closer examination re reveals many countries are composed of multiple mini outbreaks. Second wave, more like a few ripples, an almost European result at the moment. Iraq also looked good, only to relapse and accelerating higher. Extremely low level, 0 0.3 death days, but will be nice to see it back under control. Israel, two textbook curves down to extremely low levels, 1.3 death days, 0 0.6 Hubei, and minuscule overall mortality. Bravo, Israel. Pakistan, still rising from low levels, gentle curl, but really would like to see it sorted. 0 0.3 death days, not a threat. UAE, curling over at low deaths by European standards, 1.1 death days, overall mortality 1.3% not an issue. That's it for now. Back to debunking epidemiology. I never thought it would come to that. Gates and Ferguson lying. I could believe that. The entire of epidemiology being based on false models. That's a very deep rabbit hole. Gates and Ferguson aren't off the hook. The entire of epidemiology is on the hook. Let's see how bad it gets. I'm Andrew May, there are a 60-year-old Brit, mathematician, financier, technologist, husband, biker, pilot, healer, whatever. Feel free to get in touch, andrew at peerlessreads.com or andrewamather.com. Either should get to me.